It's the end of 2023. Samsung have showed all their cards with the flagship phones they've released for this year. So it begs the question, which one of their flagships gives you the best camera experience? Which one should you be taking with you heading into this holiday season? Today, we find out. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech With Benefits and a little bit of a welcome back to me. I have released two videos since coming back from holiday, but I took some time this week to sort of relax and just kind of find my groove and I'm back at it this week again. I just spent two and a half weeks in Italy with my family. It was amazing. Took some amazing photos, saw some amazing places, and I used pretty much my S23 Ultra to capture it all. Expert raw portrait video, it gave me some amazing results and captured memories that will last us a lifetime. I sprinkled the Fold 5 a little bit in there as well, as that is my main phone. And then it got me thinking, which phone actually would take the best photo and give me the best output, value for money wise, and which one should everyone take with them every time they go on holiday? I brought with me the S23 FE and the Z Flip 5, making it four Samsung flagships that were released in 2023. I wanted to put them to the test. I wanted to see side by side 4K30, 8K30, 8K24 in some cases. I wanted to see high resolution. I want to see 12 megapixels, every single camera and focal length that is available. I put it to the test. To do it, I wanted to use the picturesque Verona in Italy as the backdrop. And it was a stunning day, as you can see, some beautiful shots that I was able to capture. The way I wanna do it is I wanna do it starting off with output of photos, moving in to videos, and then also giving a bit of a look at the differences in how you can take photos across all four. For photos, I want to start with looking at individual cameras because obviously multiple lenses feature across all four of these devices. Why not break it down by lens? So let's get cracking and start with the ultra wide. From a hardware perspective, we kind of know what these four are all about. Output wise, they all have 12 megapixels, but doesn't mean they're even in their sensors and the hardware that they actually are. The S23 Ultra has the strongest performing ultra wide on paper. It's got a dual pixel. It's got the largest sensor size. It's definitely the best of the four, but let's take a bit of a look at the results that they output. With the S23 FE, I noticed that the HDR is a little bit weak at times. It just couldn't quite contrast the scene enough with the HDR consistently. Could do it sometimes, but not all. With the Z Flip 5, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it does good. It definitely is probably the weakest ultra wide camera of the four, but with the better processing, it more than makes up for it and makes it better than the S23 FE. The Fold 5 is good. There's not really much to complain about. The only thing I noticed with the Fold 5 is the contrast and the shadow is a little bit darker. The sky is a little bit bluer. The shadow is a little bit more black. The S23 Ultra, different story. It lightens up those shadows. The contrast is a little bit flatter, I guess you could say, between all the colors. And aesthetically wise, you probably prefer it. Definitely contains the most detail and the HDR is probably at its best as well. It's just a little bit flatter compared to the Fold. Personal preference probably comes into it with these two. So you just have to decide which one would be for you. Moving on to the one times camera. Now this is where probably differences start to appear, particularly when it comes to sensor size and resolution. Hardware wise, again, the S20 Ultra is the best on paper. The 200 megapixel one in 1.334 inch sensor size definitely outputs the most detail and best resolution. But the other ones, are pretty good. You got two 50 megapixels with the FE and the Fold 5, and then the 12 megapixel on the flip, which is probably the weakest of the four. Not probably, it is. Taking a look at the output though, the S23 FE should hold its head up pretty high if it if it had a head, because its details are quite sharp and the contrast and the processing is somewhere in the middle between Fold 5 and S23 Ultra in that it's a little bit darker than the Flip 5, for example, but it's just not quite as light as the S23 Ultra, for example, say for example more. The Flip 5 does have the lighter processing in the shadows with the main camera. It's mostly pretty good when it comes to detail. Of course, these are all 12 megapixel shots. This only takes 12 megapixel photos though, so there's no extra detail for it to draw from. There's no pixel binning going on. With the Fold 5, it's got that 50 megapixel main camera, but again, it's a 12 megapixel shot. Its detail is great. Its contrast and its shadows, again, the processing leans to that slightly darker 
shadows and contrast, which again is down to personal preference. Then you've got the S23 Ultra, which again produces the most amount of detail. It's very sharp. It's very crisp. I just like it. I really do appreciate the aesthetics and the processing that Samsung have gone for with the Ultra. It definitely makes it look visually appealing of the four cameras that I've got here. The thing I noticed is in terms of HDR, the S23 FE is definitely the weakest with this main camera. It, it can get a good HDR shot, but you do, you do have to wait a while and take a couple of snaps. The Ultra is just consistent. The fold and the flip, very similar. You know, they'll do the post-processing because they have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy which does allow that better, more enhanced processing that Samsung have enabled thanks to it. The other thing to note too is that two times from this one times main camera, you've got some varying differences in quality. The Flip 5 just isn't great because it's using digital zoom. Well, technically they're all using digital zoom, but the Flip 5 doesn't have the higher resolution to crop in from. The FE probably doesn't actually utilize it. it it's, it's okay. The Fold 5 is good, but the, the winner here goes to the S23 Ultra. I only took the one photo with this, so you can only see this statue, but you can see the difference, the S23 Ultra at the two times. Great detail, great photo. The three times, whilst on paper, that doesn't look like there's much difference, you can see some start to drop off. Mainly the Flip 5 because it does not have a dedicated telephoto camera. But I decided to throw it in here anyway, just to show you what the digital zoom is capable of, particularly in good lighting editions like I had in Verona that day. The thing I really like, the S23 FE, albeit an eight megapixel camera, actually takes some really pleasing three times shots. I was quite impressed, albeit a bit soft on the detail. The processing kind of made up for it and made it look really nice. It does upscale it to 12 megapixel and you kind of can see the upscaling and the softness that gets generated because of it. But I still actually like it, even even despite that. It has darker details in those in that three times camera on the FE as well, which you do notice. The Flip 5, eh, it can handle it. Obviously in the lighting editions that I've got, it does its best, but you start to really see it fall apart even just slightly zooming in on it. So if you like zoom anywhere past one or two times, the Flip 5, just it's just not going to be able to cut it. The Fold 5 does good. It's got some great detailed shots at three times, albeit again, 10 megapixel. But the Ultra, it's got the strongest three times camera because it has dual pixel autofocus and you really do notice it. Something that I kind of noticed a little bit with this three times zoom is the FE is quite a bit more cropped in versus the Fold and the Ultra. I'm not sure what it is. It's obviously using a different field of view compared to the other two. It was just very, very evident. So depending on what it is you like with three times telephoto, you might want the FE because it's closer or you might prefer the slightly removed back one of the Fold and the Ultra. It's up to you. And then of course we go to 10 times. There is a button there on all four of them to support 10 times. Doesn't mean all of them should. So obviously the S23 FE and the Fold 5 uses the three times camera to go to that 10 times. But Flip 5 just does not have the capability and I would just avoid it. You should not use the 10 times. It just turns it to mud. I wouldn't even bother. And of course the S23 Ultra has the 10 times 10 megapixel dual pixel optical zoom lens. It might be going on the S24 Ultra, we do not know, so we'll just have to wait and see what Samsung decides, but for now we still have it. And it is incredibly fun to use and it produces some stunning photos. Particularly again in these lighting editions that I had, you can get some incredible perspectives and go really close on things and see intricate details that the other cameras just can't pick up. And of course you wouldn't be able to see from where you're standing normally. So I really appreciated the 10 times in these situations. Once you go beyond 10 times, there's really no contest. The 30 times of the S23 Ultra more than accounts for the 30 times that shouldn't really be there on the Fold and the FE. I just can't comprehend how good the 30 times actually is. And particularly in the lighting conditions I had, it was just really strong. You can go to 100, but like the 30 on the Fold and the FE, should you? High resolution. There's a lot of disparity here when it comes to capability. Flip 5 just doesn't have a high resolution sensor. I was really gunning for a 50 megapixel one this year, but just didn't happen. It's got 12 megapixels and that's about it. So really it taps out of this, this part of the comparison. The S23 FE also has to tap out because the software variant I've got, the 50 megapixel just cannot process. I don't know what it is, but you have a look at this shot here. It's just got this green tinge to it and 
It didn't look like that before I took the photo. It processed it like that. So it's unfortunate, but it's down to Fold 5 and S23 Ultra. At 50 megapixels, there's not a lot of difference in terms of detail. What I did notice is pretty much what I've been noticing in processing this entire time is that the Fold 5 is darker with its shadows and its contrast, and the S23 Ultra has a bit more of a flatter, lighter version of that in its appeal. At 200 megapixels, you of course get more detail. That's the charm of 200 megapixel, is you get that extra detail to crop in further and save things as separate photos that you might not have been able to get at the time. The thing is though, at 200 megapixels, the HDR is quite considerably worse. So you just have to consider that taking it in an environment where there's tricky HDR situation, you might shy away from 200 megapixels and stick with 12 and use the zoom, probably be your best option. Now we move on to portrait mode with the photo modes all wrapped up and you kind of can get a bit of an idea of a output from each camera. Let me know in the comments which one you like the look of the most. But when it comes to portrait mode, there's not a lot of difference. A lot of it is down to Samsung using depth information from the multiple cameras and then software to generate that bokeh effect. The S3 the Ultra does take advantage of the laser autofocus module to sort of separate the distance between the camera and the subject, whereas the other ones don't have that luxury. So that should give the S20 Ultra a bit of an advantage. But let's take a look. At one times, all four portrait modes do quite a decent job. The S23 FE, I actually really enjoy the portraits that come out of it. The detail's fine. The separation in the background, it's not quite as sharp and the bokeh is not quite as natural, but I kind of, there's something about it. There's honestly something about the photo that I like. The Flip 5 does okay. Like it's, it's a good portrait mode, as is the Fold 5. Either one of those you'd be happy to take with you as a long lasting memory. Yes, where the Ultra with its one times camera does output probably the best. Apologies that my son's sitting at a different angle here. Kids, got the pleasing natural roll off. I really like the detail on the and the way it handles his curly hair. It's it's really good. When we shuffle into two times, the flip five again takes a seat. It's not capable. Whereas the other three, the two times is good. Again, I'm really impressed with the FE uh, and how it handles it. The Fold 5 does does great too, like I'm not discounting that. And again, the S3 the Ultra, because of the algorithms that it brought in when it got updated to this software variant, definitely captures the most detail and has the most natural looking background blur, again, of the three. But three times portrait mode, I actually prefer the S23 FE. It's, there's something about it. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's just a really pleasing shot to look at. It might not have the best of everything, but overall combined together, it creates a quite a nice aesthetic, which I really, really like. Fold 5 is good. Don't get me wrong. The S23 Ultra, probably in terms of technically, it's the strongest, but there's something about the, the S23 FE that draws my eye to it that I really, really like. I don't know what it is. Maybe you can let me know in the comments which one you like. Moving on to night mode. I think with night mode, I didn't really get a chance to test it too much, mainly because, well, not kids and they need to go to bed. So the, the only opportunity I had was from the balcony of my hotel room back in Milan after we'd finished in Verona. And looking at it, the S23 FE doesn't do a great job. It's got the worst sky control, I notice. It's kind of blotchy. The Flip 5 isn't great either. A lot of that's down to the, the smaller sensor size. It's not drawing in as much light. The Fold 5 does, does good. But obviously the S20 Ultra is the strongest, best processing, best sensor that's capturing and drawing in the light. So obviously of the four of them and for night mode, the S20 Ultra just handheld absolutely is the winner. When it comes to food, Samsung has built food mode into Scene Optimizer. So I'll put them up here. I've got the S23 FE, I've got the Flip 5, I've got the Fold 5, and I've got the S23 Ultra. You just have to let me know in the comments which one you believe does the best and makes the carbonara look the most appealing. It was a good authentic carbonara one that i ate very quickly switching the cameras around to selfies there's some separation here again in hardware the flip 5 s23 fe and fold 5 all have a 10 megapixel selfie camera but two of those cameras the flip and the fold have some tricks up its sleeve which i'll get to in a moment the s20 ultra has the 12 megapixel selfie camera which for me on paper is the strongest selfie camera it has dual pixel autofocus and the largest sensor size of the four output wise just in normal selfies, the S23 FE is weak. It's it's not very good. It's got like a yellowish tone to it. It's very soft on the detail. The Flip 5 and the Fold 5 are very similar in that they're very washed out and very flat. I, I don't like it. The S23 Ultra does the best when it comes to just straight selfies. 
hands down. Portrait mode, I would say that depending on what camera you're taking with the flip and the fold, you'll get different results. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the rear cameras and the rear camera selfie mode. The S23 FE, same problem. I didn't like the portrait from the selfie camera. The S3 Ultra was really good, but the real winners when it came to portrait and selfies was the rear cameras on the flip and the fold. The flip is good because it lets you use the cover screen as a preview with it closed, and it takes some good results, both in normal and portrait mode. The fold though, fold is just, with its better cameras, just produces better results. The detail from the main camera of the Fold 5 is unrivaled. You can of course use the three times as well. You probably wouldn't want to, it's too close, but it's there. And again, it produces really good results and good detail to capture from a selfie. Portrait mode wise, well, there's just no competition. You will get the best portrait modes from the flip and the fold when it comes to selfies using its rear cam selfie options. Now we're going to move on to video. And videos are a very important part of a holiday. They capture the movement, the, the feel, the moments that photos just can't get. We captured a lot of videos. And there's one, one, one camera that I use the most to capture. But in this comparison, we're just going to go through a little bit differently. When it comes to just 4K 30, which is probably what you'll mostly be shooting in because it's just point, shoot, let the camera take care of it. The S23 FE does the worst. Its detail is good, but for some reason the contrast is a little bit darker and crushed. That goes for all the cameras. When you zoom in and zoom out, that same problem kind of exists. The Flip 5 does okay. It's very limited in its zoom range, but it does okay enough. Uh, the Fold 5, better than the S23 FE in terms of it doesn't quite darken things as much, but it definitely has that darker overtones to it with its video. Whereas the S23 Ultra, with all of its cameras, just has the most aesthetically detailed, pleasing results you could want. And I really appreciated it on this holiday, having the S23 Ultra with all its cameras to take lots of videos with. And you can see the results from this fountain in particular. For stabilization, this is where things really separate. The S23 FE at 4K30 is is just no good. If you're following your kids around and you just are using it handheld, it's just not going to do the job. It improves a little bit with Super Steady, but it's still probably not great enough. So for S23 FE, if you're going to shoot a lot of video handheld, you might want to consider a gimbal to help with the stabilization because it's just not going to give you a good stable output no matter which sort of mode you're using. With the Flip 5, with the upgraded Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the increased processing that Samsung have enabled for video, it's much better with the 4K30 stabilization. Super Steady also is better than the FE. Uh, I'll get to Super Steady and its output in a little bit, but both of them stabilization wise will do you the job. Fold 5 is the same. It's effectively got the same sort of stabilization method as the Flip 5 in that it's using more video digital image stabilization than it is using OIS. And the Super Steady, very similar output. Again, I'll get to that in a moment. The best stabilization of all is the 4K30 from the S23 Ultra. It is so smooth and stable compared to the others that it's, a, it's in a different league. A lot of that is down to the fact that Samsung have enabled a two times wider correction angle on the main camera versus the S22 Ultra from last year, which already had an improved correction angle over the S21 Ultra. The other cameras, the Fold 5, the S23 and the Plus didn't get those. So only the Ultra got that. And it definitely makes the difference. And of course you get all the great HDR and the detail from the 4K30 that the Ultra gives you. The problem is, is that if you use Super Steady, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be stable, but you miss the HDR and you miss the detail. So depending on the situation, you might not need it. With the Ultra, I would say you don't need it at all. But with the others, there could be times where you might want it. But the Ultra, stick to 4K30. The other mode for video that I highly recommend using is portrait video. I use it all the time. This is shot using 4K portrait video on the S23 Ultra. One thing to notice with the S23 FE, it really made the sky incredibly deep blue, which it wasn't. It wasn't that deep, but it's also only full HD. So you do lose a bit of the detail, especially if you're someone that likes to crop into your video to sort of create some drama. You're not gonna be able to do that because it does kind of lose the detail once you sort of crop in. The Flip 5 is the same. The contrast isn't isn't the same and the, the sky is not that blue, but it's full HD. You don't get the UHD 4K of the Fold 5 and the S23 Ultra. The Fold 5 is good. 
I would happily use that as a portrait video without any issues whatsoever. But the best portrait video is of course the S23 Ultra. Combination of things, the main camera being so large compared to the fold and the laser autofocus sensor, which kind of helps create that depth a little bit more naturally. Again, following the rest of the processing, it's the lighter contrast, less dark shadows that you see that makes it so visually appealing. And I left this one to last 8K. On a holiday, I dare say you will not find many opportunities to just switch to 8K. Verona was probably the best example because it was so bright and sunny and, and you had a lot of detail around you. So it was worth testing. 8K24 on the S23 FE, throw it away. Honestly, don't understand why it needs to be there. 24 frames per second and the 8K being so cropped in made it pretty much unusable. I get it, Samsung want to say they have 8K on the FE, but honestly at this point you'd be better off without it. 8K30 on the Fold 5 and 8K30 on the S23 Ultra, pretty much on par with each other. There's just some processing differences in that the S23 Ultra is sort of lighter and a pretty much consistent theme throughout the whole video, where the Fold 5 processes a little bit darker. Flip 5, sorry, you can't play. All right, we're now at the pointy end. Obviously we've seen the output and you can be the judge on output in the comments below which one you think has handled everything the best. Overall, output wise, the S20 Ultra probably has a case for, for being the best. But there's one important factor that needs to be considered. Something that kind of changes not just the output of the photos, but how you capture it. Because it's not just about the output. Sometimes you might have a moment that needs capturing that's incredibly complex, or there's no one to take the photo for you. So you need a camera that's capable of doing that. And that's where this thing called uniqueness comes into it. For this round or this area of the video, the S23 FE goes to the bench. There's nothing unique about it. It is just three cameras on the back and the camera modes are pretty much stock standard of every Samsung phone that's released this year. Nothing special about it that sets it apart. So go take a seat. For the Flip 5, obviously the main point of difference that sets it apart from everything else is its form factor. It's the flex mode, realistically. The flex mode really truly allows you to have different perspectives of your videos and your photos, but it also gives you a great device to capture you and someone else and get a bit of a feel for what the photo is going to look like. Using the cover screen, you can just place the flip down and you can position yourself with, let's say, my son, and I can get a photo in front of a beautiful landmark like the arena, and without anyone being able to take it for me, I can let the flip take it itself. That's what really truly sets this apart. There's a lot of other things, and you can go watch my Flip 5 review to sort of see what the camera is capable of in terms of its form factor. But just from this, you honestly can get so many different cool perspectives from the Flip 5 that is worth taking a look at. The Fold 5, very similar. It offers a little bit of difference in terms of you can place it down and you have the inside display with the optimization of the software to truly give you different perspectives of what you can capture. You also have the option with the land, like landscape video, like 16 by nine in that sort of way. And it captures the full resolution. It's just clever in how it does that. So I think the Fold 5, for its unique perspective, it can give you, but also the, the flex mode capabilities that it has, that's another point of difference that sets it apart, that makes it unique and gives you something that other phones just can't do. The S23 Ultra, whilst on the surface, it's just another slab rectangle, it has some uniqueness about it as well. Yes, you could probably talk about the high resolution, you talk about the 10 times, you could even throw in the ultra wide that doubles as a macro camera. All of that can be considered, but the thing that truly sets this apart is the S Pen. The S Pen is the key differentiator when it comes to photography that no other phone can, can tout to have. Fold 5 has the S Pen Pro, but it's just not the same as being included and embedded in the device itself. I used the S Pen at the Colosseum in Rome, and I, whilst I didn't have a tripod, it was really nice to be able to just set the phone up against the pole, and using the S Pen, I could create some long exposure shots and expert raw and capture a beautiful photo of the Colosseum. That's what truly kind of sets it apart. You know, you've got the flexibility of the, the main cameras being ultra wide all the way through to 10, but then you also have the S Pen that allows you to capture differently versus other things. Again, that, that has to be considered, not just the output, but the uniqueness of the S Pen and the, the cameras that are on board.
So which one comes out on top? I guess you could say based on output, the S23 Ultra would win hands down, but it's not quite as cut and dry as that. Especially when you factor in the uniqueness and pun intended absolutely, the flexibility of the other form factors with the fold and the flip that kind of give you something more that you wouldn't have on a normal phone. But what this comparison kind of highlights to me is if you take away the 10 times, you take away the 200 megapixel, it's much closer than you would think. I honestly imagine you would get incredible shots out of all four of these if you used them appropriately. Some of them, the flip and the S23 FE, you might need to have a little bit more patience to get the shot, but I believe they are capable of getting a great photo. Whereas the Fold and definitely the Ultra are more consistent. They are stronger point and shoot cameras than what you would get on the other two. But we love a ranking, so here is my ranking from fourth to first. In fourth place, it's probably no surprise, but I've got the Z Flip 5 down there. Reason being, it's just got the weakest of the hardware of the cameras. Yes, the flexibility of the form factor is there, but the output isn't. Next, in third spot, it's it's a, another easy one. It's the S23 FE. I think though with the S23 FE, it's clear of the flip by a distance. The flexibility of the cameras plus the processing do a decent enough job to put it into third place by a comfortable margin. But in a more comfortable margin above that is our second spot. And it was really hard to determine which way I was going to go because there are so many things I like from both. I love flex mode on the fold and what it can do for me in situations that demand it. But the output of the Ultra always is consistent. And for me, I know that I would always reach for that if I needed to take a photo or a video. And ultimately that's what kind of made my decision. If I needed to take a photo and I wanted the best output possible, which one am I reaching for? So it came down to that. In second spot was the Fold 5, not by much, but it's in second. And then in first spot, because every time I think about recording a video, every time I think about taking photos, I want the Ultra with me. So much so that even though the Fold is my main phone, the Ultra sits in my other pocket just for the opportunity to take photos when I need it. So I don't know what your ranking looks like. That was my top four. Let me know your top four in the comments below if you've made it this far. Also, consider subscribing. In fact, please subscribe. I'm not begging you to. Like the video as well. Between now and my next video, you might want to also come hang out with me on Twitter slash X and Instagram. I love a bit of a chat, so please come engage with me on there. I'll see you in the next one. Yo!